to that. So I first met Lauren when I was a first year graduate assistant back in 2010. My roommate was actually the athletic trainer working with her primarily. And he would always tell these funny stories about you'll never guess what this kid Lauren did at practice today, whatever it may have been. And she's laughing because she knows that there was plenty of those stories. And then finally, I got to the point where I went to start watching races. And I said, told him, I said, all you told me was that she was doing all these goofy things at practice. You never told me that she was a freaking stud. And he said, well... He goes, the stories were funnier that way. And I said, fair enough. But over the time, got to know her a little better as she was coming in for rehab and things of that nature and got a chance to just kind of know her as a person and what a sweet girl she was. And then the next thing I know, I'm graduating. She's still at UVA. We randomly, I don't know if she even remembers this, I was on the road with the softball team from Morgan State University, and we were in the same hotel as the UVA swimming team that next year. You remember that. Yes. Yeah. So ran into her there again. And then the next thing I know, we're friends on Facebook and I'm seeing pictures of her in London. And then she is swimming in the 2012 Olympics. And I was like, hey, I know that girl. And just kind of go from there. And then just kind of following along on Facebook through her career with swimming. And she kept mentioning the fact that God was playing a part in it. And that's one of those things where I didn't do a great job of staying in touch because that's a tough thing to do no good excuses but just one of those things as Robert and I started talking for years now I've said it would be great to get Lauren to talk to you guys and now one of the blessings that has kind of come out of this situation is we've gotten more comfortable or at least more okay with virtual meetings and so that's kind of how everything kind of fell in place here so I'm gonna go ahead and pray us in and then turn things on over to Lauren. So go ahead and bow your heads. Dear Lord, thank you guys for putting this together. Thank you for Robert's heart for being able to kind of lead and adapt and allow this ministry to evolve for this group. And thank you to have Lauren for being willing to answer a random Facebook message as we were trying to plan out the semester and be willing to reconnect and kind of help share her story and the work that you've done in her life with this group of athletes that are still trying to work their way through these challenging times. Please just be with us as we consider some of Lauren's story, as well as some of the questions she's going to give us for reflection and help us be able to open our minds and our hearts and just enjoy this time together and enjoy the story she has to share with us. So I'm going to go ahead and pass things over to Lauren. Thank you. Thanks so much, Andrew. And what a blessing that you did reach out. I mean, I just feel like, um, you know, this was meant to happen and uh, I'm just really grateful for the opportunity and I just love meeting other athletes. So um, thank you all for having me and for listening to my story. Um, so I'll give you kind of a brief background about just kind of my upbringing and how I got into swimming um, and then I'll get into the good stuff. Um, so I grew up in Greenville, North Carolina, um, and I kind of came from a swimming family. Both my parents swam competitively in college. They actually both swam at D1 colleges, and uh, my dad actually almost made the Olympic team in 1980, I believe. Um, and so I just kind of had that history, that background. I have two siblings. Both of them also swam. So I just kind of grew up around the water. Um, and I started swimming competitively when I was probably six or seven, um, and it just kind of stuck with me. Um, I, you know, swimming came very naturally for me, um, and I just, it just kind of grew from there. Um, by the time I was like 13 years old, you know, I was starting to get more serious about it, and I was starting to compete at higher levels, and I, you know, started to think about kind of my future, um, you know, if I want to swim in college and then after, you know, what happens after that. And so I started to kind of formulate this dream in my heart of um, competing in the Olympics. And for some reason, I just had like this tunnel vision on London 2012. Like I knew that that's what I wanted to do or like the 2012 Olympics at that point. That's what I, that's, you know, what I thought was kind of the ideal time in my swimming career. I would have been, you know, a junior in college, 
you know, I would have had all this experience, uh, you know, with high level swimming under my belt. And so it'd be like the perfect kind of combination of, of things to all come together for me to be successful. So, you know, here I am as a teenager and I have these very lofty goals. Um, you know, I was swimming for a tiny, tiny swim club. When I started there, there was only, I think, 50 swimmers. Um, so, you know, for a little girl from a small town in North Carolina, from a small club team to have these lofty dreams, you know, I mean, people are probably like, oh, that's great, sweetie, but, you know, good luck kind of thing. So um, anyway, I kept, you know, sticking to it and um, I made it through high school. I was, my times were getting faster and faster. I was, you know, nationally ranked um, swimmer and I received a um, full scholarship to swim at the University of Virginia. Uh, in 2009. And so um, I went to UVA and my first two years I was swimming, you know, better than I'd ever swum in my life. I was, you know, really kind of excelling under the training and under the um, mentorship of our coaches there. It was just kind of like, you know, it seemed like everything was just going perfectly. And um, it was you know, all kind of going really well until the summer before my junior season at UVA. I uh, started to experience back pain. Um, it, you know, started as kind of a dull ache, a throb, and it just got worse and worse and worse. Um, the, you know, the doctors and the trainers, you know, weren't really sure what was causing it. Um, I had an, actually got an x-ray. I had all these tests done. The x-ray uh, said, you know, it was negative for any fracture. The MRI said it, you know, it wasn't a herniated disc. So there are all these question marks. You know, no one really knew what was going on. Um, so fast forward six months later, um, I'm in the middle of my junior season, um, which is, you know, the year before um, or the year of the 2012 Olympic trials um, that were going to be that summer, that next summer. And I, um, you know, I, I still was really struggling through the pain. I, you know, had all of these kind of non-invasive procedures to try and get rid of the pain and nothing worked. I mean, it was just, um, you know, really discouraging. Um, and my faith was really tested during that time. Um, you know, I, I grew up a Christian. I grew up in a Christian home. I um, gave my life to Christ when I was, I think, probably 13, 12 or 13. Um, so that was always kind of a cornerstone in my life and a foundation of my, you know, of my swimming. Um, I always felt that God had given me that gift of swimming. And so during this, you know, horrible year with the back pain at UVA, I just felt like, you know, that was kind of being taken from me. And I felt like, um, you know, my identity that I had found in swimming my whole life was being kind of ripped away from me. Um, so it was a really uh, depressing time of my life. Um, I, you know, kind of was, I don't know, I was just lost. I was starting to get into some destructive behavior. You know, I was maybe going out partying more than I should, if any, um, during the week even. I was in a bad relationship uh, with my college boyfriend of two years. You know, things started to get kind of toxic with that. I was just in a downward spiral, uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and it just wasn't getting better. Um, and it all kind of came to a head um, at the end of my junior year, um, which was, if you count the clock back, nearly one year after all of this back pain had started. So a year of dealing with this and not really knowing what was going on with my back. Um, I ended up going to another doctor and I got a second opinion. And that doctor reopened the x-ray from the year before and had his team of radiologists look at it. And they immediately spotted like right away that there was a stress fracture in my uh, L5S1 joint in my lower back. So right above my pelvis. And um, so they, what they ended up doing was getting a new x-ray then and they kind of proved my worst fears imaginable. Um, you know, as you can imagine, training on a, a broken back for 12 months is not going to make things any better. Um, it made things a lot worse. And I uh, discovered that that piece of bone where the fracture had originated 
actually like cracked all the way through and that bone was it broke off of my joint in my back um disparity all the details um so i was kind of faced with a really hard decision in that moment um it was about three and a half months before the 2012 olympic trials which were in omaha nebraska the Olympic trials are, are for swimming are always held every four years and they're held about a month before the actual Olympic Games. So, you know, I was about four months away from the Olympics and three and three ish months away from the Olympic trials. Um, and I was faced with this really difficult decision. Um, you know, the doctor told me, he said, you know, I think you have two options. You can either opt to not have surgery to remove that piece of bone. And you can, you know, rehab and just kind of pray and hope that it gets better. But he said, you're not going to be swimming at all this summer. You know, if you do that, um, it's unlikely that you'll be healed in time. He said the second option he gave me was to move forward with back, with back surgery. And the back surgery, it seemed pretty simple. They were just going to go in there and remove the little piece of bone. It was like the size of my pinky nail. And, um, you know, he thought that would really help um, a lot of the like nerve pain and um, kind of residual pain I was having from from that little piece of bone being stuck in there. So, but he did tell me, he said, you know, with either option, he said, to be honest, I don't know if you're ever going to swim at the same level that you were swimming again. And I mean, I just was just hearing hearing a doctor, a professional say that to me. I mean, it was earth shattering. I mean, it was just, it shattered, you know, my heart. I just felt like this was just, you know, a year of all of this heartache and pain, you know, the depression I was having, you know, everything had just fallen to pieces in my life. I was, I was just, you know, in so much pain mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually at that point. So I thought about it a little bit and I decided to have the back surgery um, and I ended up having it, it was like about three months before the Olympic trials. And, um, you know, at that point I was, you know, not really optimistic that I would be recovered in time to swim at the trials. Um, I just kind of thought, well, you know, maybe I'll be healed in time to swim my senior year at UVA and maybe I'll be able to, you know, compete at all. So I had the back surgery um, and, you know, it went well, they accomplished what they were hoping to accomplish. Um, but I was uh, like very slow to recover um, for some reason, more slow than is typical. Like I had issues with my back incision healing. Like it just, you know, the surgery went well, but then like the post-surgery, just everything was moving really slowly. And I was, you know, kind of chomping at the bit to get back in the water. And so it was about five weeks of not swimming at all after surgery, doing some very light, you know, rehab, um, five weeks of, of being out of the pool, which is for a swimmer, it, a lifetime. I mean, for any athlete, but for a swimmer where you have to physically be in the water to train, um, that is, you know, you can't really cross train as well. That was just like, you know, a no, no, like you don't do that. You don't take more than like two weeks off per year typically. So to take the five weeks off before, you know, the biggest swim meet of my entire life was just like, you know, crazy. So five weeks later, I'm back in the pool. I am, you know, moving really slowly. I am, uh, you know, kind of doing my own workouts at that point. I wasn't even really doing anything with the team. I couldn't keep up with anybody. Um, and um, one of the assistant coaches actually kind of took me under her wing and, and we, just the two of us, um, you know, would, would do practices together. I would show up before the team got there in the afternoons and I would swim with her for an hour. And, and she really kind of helped me, you know, gain my confidence back and get my strength back. And so, um, you know, a couple months go by and we're about, you know, three weeks from the Olympic trials. Um, and I'm still just kind of in just not a great place. You know, I'm just discouraged that 
you know, I'm, I'm still not able to really train. I'm just frustrated that the healing process had taken longer than I thought. I'm just mad. I'm just still just not, you know, not in a good place. And I just remember this one day, I mean, it was like a beautiful day in Charlottesville. It was, you know, it was during the summer, so there weren't many students there. And I'm just, I just decided to go, you know, pick up a lunch and eat on the lawn, which is just a gorgeous, you know, area, um, really green, pretty green area where the rotunda is, which is like the center of the university. And I'm sitting there on the grass and I just, I don't know, something just kind of hit me. It was like, I mean, it was God like being like, hello, like, are you ever going to like come back? Are you ever going to turn to me and ask for help? And I just remember just this wave of emotion kind of just crashing over me. And I just realized at that moment that the issue here, the real root of the problem was that in all these areas of my life with swimming, you know, with this back injury, I could not control with the destructive relationship with my college boyfriend, all these things I was trying so hard to control the outcome, right? I was trying so hard to control the outcome of, you know, my swimming, the outcome of that relationship, the outcome of, you know, this back injury, instead of just letting it go and just trusting God and just simply just putting it, you know, at his feet and knowing that he's going to show up which is what he always does. He never, ever leaves us. He never gives us more than we can't handle. And it was just, that was a turning point for me. I mean, a huge turning point. I actually broke up with my boyfriend that night, believe it or not. There were just, it was just like a culmination of like all these things over the last year that just hit me. And I knew what I had to do. Like everything was very, very clear in my mind. And so at that point, moving forward, um, you know, with the Olympic trials only about two and a half weeks later, two weeks later, I just felt this really strong urge, just pushing for me to go, to, to go to the Olympic trials, even though, you know, I was barely, barely, you know, swimming, barely making it through practice without having, you know, pain. And um, I, but I just felt kind of just this nudge, this urge to go. And I, I remember calling my parents, and this was like the week before the Olympic trials. Um, I remember calling them and, you know, telling them that I was going to go, that I decided I was going to go to Olympic trials to just, you know, be there to support my teammates. I had already qualified for for the meet for the Olympic trials, so why not just go and just see how it goes? And my mom thought I was crazy. She was like, you know, you're still you're still in pain you know, you're barely, barely been in the water for a few weeks, you know, why don't you just sit this one out? And I just, I just felt just this strong calling to go. And so I did, I, I packed my stuff, I got on a plane to Omaha, Nebraska, and, um, you know, I show up at the pool for our first um, kind of warm up session about, I'd say two days before the swim meet actually starts. And I, I'm about to dive into the pool and to warm up and my back up until that point was still bothering me just kind of just aching throbbing you know it's still in the healing process but as I dive into the water and start to warm up my back pain just disappears just gone and I'm kind of like this is strange <laughs> you know I am a very realistic and down to earth person and I, you know, I need proof and evidence of, of something and, and I just could not, there was just no other explanation for this and it made no sense logically that this would happen, but my back pain disappears and as I'm warming up and, you know, kind of getting into things, I, I had never felt so good in the water before. I had never felt sharper and cleaner and faster and you know, I just, something was just kind of happening there and <laughs> I didn't want to get too excited because, you know, I'm a very realistic, logical person and it just did not make sense in my head. So I kept it to myself. I said, well, that was great, but you know, tomorrow I'm probably going to be hurting again. Tomorrow I'm probably going to be feeling as bad as I was, you know, before this happened. But then tomorrow, the same thing, I get into the pool, I start to swim and warm up and I'm swimming even faster than I was the day before. So then 
The next day is my first race. Um, and for, for those of you who are not familiar with Olympic trials for swimming, um, you to, to qualify for the Olympic team, you have to swim three times. So you swim in your preliminary heat, and then the top 16 that finish in that event, the top 16, will go on to swim in their, uh, the semifinals of that event. And then the top eight from that heat go on to swim in the finals of that event. And then from there, in my event, the top four that finished would automatically qualify for the Olympic team. So I knew I had to get through three fast swims, three really, really strong swims, and then more, and then some to be able to make the Olympic team. So anyway, I'll skip to the good part. So I, my first swim, my, the preliminary heat, I swam really well. My back, you know, felt great. I ended up um, putting up a best time, a personal best. Um, you know, I never swam that fast in my life. I think I dropped like two seconds or something off of my best time, which is unheard of in this, in the event that I was swimming. And then the semifinals, so I swim fast enough and I make semifinals. And, you know, I swim another best time um, and I ended up qualifying for the finals, the top eight. And at this point, I'm just like, Lord, what is happening right now? You know, what is going on? I mean, it's, it was nuts. Um, I was just like, you know, in a state of shock almost up to this point. But when I made the finals, I knew that I had a shot. I knew that he put me here for a reason. And I knew that all of this leading up to that, you know, came to a head at this single moment. And so the finals of the 200 freestyle, um, I, you know, I'm actually right next to, I'm on the end lane. So we call it outside smoke. So if you're on the one of the outside lanes, you kind of have an advantage because you can almost see, you know, you have a better vision of everybody else in the field because um, you're on the outside. So I was swimming right next to Missy Franklin. Some of you may know that name. Um, she is one of the best, was one of the best swimmers, is still one of the best swimmers in the world. And I knew that if I could just stay at her feet, if I could just stay as close to her feet, ankles, knees as I could, that I would probably make the Olympic team because she was going to make it, I knew for a fact. So that was kind of my strategy. And I, you know, swam. It was the hardest race of my entire life. Um, but I ended up finishing and I touched the wall and I look up and I see a number four next to my name. And I had automatically qualified for the Olympic team in that, in that event. Um, and I just like lost it. I mean, <laughs> there's a photo of me after I looked up and saw my, you know, my name with the four and my goggles were all lopsided and I'm crying and my face is like, I mean, it was just like total shock and disbelief that this had happened. And oh, Wayne, what an incredible feeling. I just, um, the only, the only explanation for it, and I will tell anybody that asked me this, is it was God. It was a miracle. I mean, it, for me to have done that after three and a half months after having back surgery, um, I mean, to make the Olympic team alone, you know, it's 0.01% of the population or something crazy. I mean, you have to be at the top of your game. You have to be 100% healthy, you know, at the top of your game to make it. And I wasn't. I was not even close. Um, and so I just, you know, this is something where, you know, it's a life lesson. You have to just trust God. When he gives you the urge to do something, you have to just trust it. Just don't ask questions. Just do it. And I promise you, you're going to look back and you're going to connect the dots and see, oh, that's why this happened. Or, oh, that's why, you know, he put me through this. Or it's all going to, you know, kind of come together at the end. Um, my favorite, favorite quote during this whole season of my life um, is, or not quote, verse, is um, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. And that was just what I stuck to, you know, that entire 
season of my life. Um, so um, I'll just jump really quick just to kind of what I'm doing now. So after um, the Olympics, I had one more year of college um, swimming. So I went back to UVA and I swam my senior year. Um, you know, I didn't swim as well as I had hoped. I think kind of coming off of that Olympic high, if you will, the, you know, thrill of kind of reaching that mountaintop experience. It, uh, it's hard. It's, um, some people call it post-Olympic depression. And if you like Google it, look it up, it's actually a thing. <laughs> um, you know, people like Michael Phelps, you know, they've all kind of gone through it. The ones that are at the, you know, the most elite in their sport have gone through it. And so I was experiencing this at a you know, very much smaller level, but um, it, you know, it took me a little while to kind of find my identity again um, after that happened, because I felt like, you know, if I can make the Olympic team and, and win a gold medal at the Olympics, you know, what is ever, nothing's ever going to amount to that, you know, I mean, you kind of start thinking that in your head and it, it's really depressing. Um, and it's not true. I mean, it's completely false, but that's what our, our brain tells us. And so my senior year was kind of a wash. I swam okay, but not, not great. Um, and then kind of to top it off, I started having elbow pain, <laughs> um, another injury. And so I barely made it through my senior year um, without my elbow completely giving out. And I ended up having to have elbow surgery right after um, my season ended. So, um, you know, that was not a great way to end your senior year, but it's all right. Um, and so after I had that surgery, I, you know, was really kind of hoping to make another Olympic team. I, I didn't feel like I was done yet with swimming. I felt like there was still something left. And so um, I decided to move to Charlotte, um, where I am currently, Charlotte, North Carolina. And I swam with a... Um, professional swim team here called Team Elite. Uh, Ryan Lochte was on it, Colin Jones, um, some other kind of top, you know, Olympic swimmers were here training. And um, about three months into my training, you know, new life in Charlotte, I had to have another elbow surgery, uh, which was about, I think, only eight months after my first, and it was on the same arm. So I just you know, at that point, you're kind of like, oh, gosh, you know, <laughs> you're, you're rehabbing, you're recovering from the first surgery, and you're almost there, and then you fall all the way back to the beginning. So, you know, it was tough. Um, I thought that the hardest time of my life was that year in college when I had the back injury and having to overcome that. But honestly, I mean, you know, things don't really get easier in life. That's the hard truth. And um my first couple years in Charlotte were really tough. I um, just really struggled. And um, actually on top of that, my back injury had kind of flared back up again. And so I was just like, I was a mess. So, um, you know, I kind of came to another head, another point in my spiritual life where I, I just kind of gave God the control. And I said, God, what are you, what do you want from me in this season? What are you asking me to do? you know, I was a swimmer, right? My identity was Lauren Purdue, the swimmer, okay? <laughs> That's who I was. And so I kind of just put it at God's feet, like I had, you know, that time in college. And I said, what do you want? What do you want me to do with this? You know, I'm, I'm giving it up to you. I am putting it at your feet. I'm surrendering it. You know, I'm going to trust you and trust where you lead me. And I felt this, um, kind of nudging on my heart after that, that it was time for me to move on from swimming. And I just felt like, you know, it was one of the very few times in my life where there was no doubt in my decision, no doubt, you know, I knew that that was what I had to do. So I retired from competitive swimming in, I want to say 2014. Um, and, you know, I started kind of my career here in Charlotte in commercial real estate, which is what I'm still doing now. Um, so anyway, I guess just kind of the theme of my whole story, you know, from start to finish is just um, learning to let go of the control of the outcome, you know, stop trying to control the outcome of XYZ. I mean, that can be 
you know, that, that can relate to each and every one of you guys. I mean, there's, there's something I'm sure in your lives right now that, you know, is just, it's really just kind of wearing you down, you know, it's whether it's school related, it's relationships, it's your sport, you know, whatever it is. And there's a lot going on right now in the world that can wear you down, trust me. But um, whatever it is, just, you know, learn to just let it go. And it's such a hard thing to do, right? It is the hardest thing just to let it go. Just open your hands, open your heart and put it at God's feet. And I promise you, I promise you, if you trust him and trust that he's not going to give you more than you can't handle and he's not going to forsake you or leave you or abandon you, I promise you that, you know, he's going to bring you through that experience and you're going to look back, you know, maybe years down the road and say, oh, wow, you know, I'm so glad that I trusted him with that. I'm so glad that I, you know, let him have control. So that's, that's my story. <laughs> that's all I got. Man. Lauren, that is amazing. Um, thank you so much. Uh, and it's really funny because, um, you know, we had talked about maybe some little follow-up questions to your story. And if I showed you my paper right now, literally you nailed every follow-up question oh. <laughs> just in your story. No, that's when you know that God is truly leading this thing and everything. Um, I think one question that I would ask you before we send them to breakouts and then um, we guys, we have to remember she is an hour ahead of us um, and she's a working person. But once we come out of the groups, if she has a few minutes for you guys to ask her some questions, um, we can always reassemble. And uh, if you've got something that you would like to ask her, Lauren, would that be all right? Absolutely. Yeah. I, um, you know, no rush. i go to bed kind of late anyway. So. Okay. Well, you shouldn't have said that because they'll take full <laughs> advantage of that. My husband <laughs> might not be happy with that. <laughs> so the one question that I have, because like I say, seriously, in your story, you hit everything else, uh, but you did reference what all is going on today. So if you go back to March with COVID, all of the race relations that have been happening, all of the political stuff and everything. What has God showed you personally throughout these few months? You know, it is, um, it's been tough. I mean, it has been just, it just wears you down, you know, watching the news, you know, listening to all the debates on TV and it's just, it's just exhausting. Um, and I think, you know, I think really what God is trying to do through all of this is, I mean, I think he's just trying to like wake up call. I mean, come on people, <laughs> like we can't do this. We can't, you know, continue to live our lives selfishly in, in the way that we've been. I mean, we, I think our country needs a, a big wake up call, you know, and, and God is the only, only person, only being that can do that. Um, I truly believe that. So I've been praying for our country a lot. We, we really need it. Perfect, man. Thank you so much. All right. She has crafted some great questions. And uh, so Joey's going to throw us into 